The following program is sponsored in part by the friends and partners of Philip Goodo Ministries and Calvary Christian Center. Welcome to Philip Goodo Ministries. Now here's Pastor Goodo. Started a new series this morning, a message that I want to pick up and hit some of them before I, I lay hands and pray for the sick. Uh, I, 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 we started a new series called How to Resolve Conflict and Restore Broken Relationships. How to Resolve Conflict, because conflict is a big issue for everybody. Everybody deals with conflict on some kind of level, and a lot of times we deal with conflict more than what we want to. And the enemy loves bringing conflict into your life, which is another word for strife or division, combat, you know, craziness and all the other stuff. And the enemy dissolves a lot of relationships, move people out of places and positions that God has placed them in to be able to bless their life and to intervene on their behalf but because they don't understand the warfare that is in this earth realm, they don't understand that the enemy will do all he can to get you out of position or rob you from a relationship that God intended for you to have or a job that he intended for you to keep or a church that he intended for you to keep going to or whatever. The enemy works hard at getting you out of position. Turn to neighbor and say, not you though. Tell him, not you. So I brought out, I'm just going to do a little quick review, and I brought out in the book of Genesis, the 13th chapter, verse 7 through 9, where that there was, uh, God had blessed Abraham with everything you could ever imagine out of his obeying God in the 13th chapter, blessed him, and then he took Lot with him, and then God was pouring out his blessing upon him, and then there came strife, and it says, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram and between Lot. Abram, Lot was receiving the blessing behind being with Abram, and then, but Lot didn't have the recognition to try to be able to fight to keep his relationship, and he allowed himself to then get pulled away through strife to lose something he should have never lost. And he started downhill from then on behind that area. You know, that we got to fight. It, you just got, I'm not going to go through the verse 7, I mean 8 and 9 and different ones, but you can see the whole reset in that area and the demise of a uh, lot behind allowing strife to come into relationship. See, you got something to say about what happens in your life. Amen. God has given you the authority in the dominion. And, you know, sometimes we, we got to reel our feelings in, our emotions in, when conflict is trying to arise that we don't allow ourselves, and I'm going to deal more with this in, on, on Sunday, but uh, dealing with the, the, the issues of our emotions and stuff along that line. So I talked about that, brought out James 3.16, and about the area where strife is, there's jealousy and ambition and selfish ambitions and every disorder and all kind of craziness going on in your life. Say not in my life. So, one, so I think that one of the most important messages that anybody can hear, maybe because I'm teaching it, but I, I just believe it, that one of the most important messages that anybody can hear is this message on how to resolve conflict and how to restore and reconcile broken and strained relationships. Because most people, I don't even know nobody who ever went through a class or was ever taught on what I'm teaching you right now. And that's why most people are not uh, able to be able to handle and how to resolve things. And they think the best way to resolve something is to walk away from it. But that is not the best way. And, and sometimes there is, sometimes you have to walk away, but you walk away in peace. Okay, are you with me? So sometimes there is the, the peace area. So I, I, I've dealt with a whole bunch of concern in the area that we got to Living in peace is living in victory and keeping strife out of your home and out of your life is a major thing that you got to do. So conflict, I broke down the word conflict, and the word conflict means combat, contentions, uh, animosity, arguments, uh, altercations, disagreements, discord, <laughs> quarreling, 
uh, rivalry, uh, tug of war, and warfare. I mean, that word conflict ain't no joke. <laughs> and, and everybody in here, and you watching me right now, have dealt with conflict on different scales. And unfortunately, I wish I could try to tell you that you won't have to deal with it ever again, but it's a, a major area that you have to understand why you got to fight to keep yourself from being able to uh, be a victim all the time and lose on the losing end because you allow the conflict to win versus you winning. So look with me in Proverbs 20 and three, Proverbs 20 and three. And uh, I want to share this scripture. And it says, uh, it is an honor for a man or a woman to keep away from what? To keep away from what? Combat, contention, animosity, argument, uh, uh, altercation, disagreement, discord, quarreling. I could go on and on. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. And I, the key word that I wanted to emphasize is the word honor. It is an honor. Say it, shout it out, it's an honor. If it honors God, listen to me, if it honors God, that's why the enemy is going to fight so much more to keep you in dishonor. It's an honor. It is an honor for a man or a woman to keep away from strife by handling situations without thoughtful foresight. Now, there's a whole thing about that, that that I need to share on about how you need to be able to sit down. You need to talk. You got to learn how to listen. You got to be able to listen more than you talk. Right. And some people, that would maybe be a major miracle. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yes. Look what it says here. Uh, and it says, but any fool, how many fools? I declare, declare this is a, 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 a fool-free zone. Amen. I'm declaring ain't no fools here watching. You ain't watching me, or you ain't in here in this service tonight. A, a, a fool-free zone. How many of y'all used to be a fool? Anybody used to be a fool beside me? Anybody used to be stupid beside me? All y'all raise your hands up. Amen. But, but now... Thank God for wisdom. Thank God for greater understanding of how to deal. Uh, but any fool will sta start a quarrel without regards of the consequences. They're not even thinking about what it's going to cost them behind being stuck on stupid, being foolish. Are you with me? So um, conflict. Conflict is defined as a fight, a battle, a struggle. Number one. Number two, unaddressed conflict affects more than just your spirit, but all that we love is manna touched by our being affected by conflict and not knowing how to handle it. It doesn't not just affect you, but it's going to affect everybody that loves you. Conflict steals, number one, your time your energy, and your money, and opportunities for better things in your life. And opportunities for better things in your life. I wonder how many <laughs> opportunities have been missed in our life because we were stuck on being confrontational. Got to win the argument. Got to be able to be defensive. Your emotions is always on your shoulders. You're going to lose these four areas, understanding your time, your energy, your money, and opportunities for better things. Matthew 5 and 9 says, God blesses those who work for peace. And I want to emphasize work for peace because in a situation and transition, and I brought out this morning, I've had uh, umpteen, overflowing, opportunities to be contentious. Uh, I've had more conflict than you can ever imagine. But my greatest conflict that the enemy was trying to steal from me and steal everything good that God wanted to do in my life was between Brenda and myself. 
And, and, and it wasn't that Brenda was a mean spirit. It was just that we're two different people. And two different people have to work at working at, Amen. to work on working together. And that working ain't no joke because we're different. And so it's not just a man and woman difference. It's, a, it's a how, the, the how you think and how you look at things. Does anybody know what I mean? So I had, we had to work on it, and the enemy was viciously attacking our marriage at a young age, at a young time, because he, got, he knew that God had bigger things in store for us, and if he could try to destroy what God was trying to do in our life by us walking away. And we almost did it. We almost did it. It just, it just I, I was gone. Come on, I ain't by myself. <laughs> Don't be looking at me like I'm weird or something. No, I was, I was gone. I guess over with. But, but God intervened supernaturally, and and intervened and and used somebody like me that I'm doing right now for y'all. <laughs> intervening and God intervened on my behalf with my dad and intervened and said, "You go back and get your wife." Don't you, don't you let the devil steal this from you. Amen. Swallow your pride and your anger and your bitterness. <laughs> I'm going home right now. Glory to God. <laughs> you better get your act together. Phil. Don't you let the devil steal everything that God wants to do in your life. Amen. Shit, I'm about to cry right now. Let me read the Amplified to you real quickly. The Amplified on the same verse. And it says, blessed and spiritually calm uh, with uh, life's joy in God's favor are the what? Makers. This is what gets me. Makers and maintainers of peace. Makers and maintainers. In other words, I got to make peace with you, and then I got to maintain peace with you. <laughs> I have to keep, I got to, because what's going to happen is the enemy is going to work at trying to get back in there after we didn't made peace to get back in there and bring some more strife to try to divide us again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So I got to, I got to make it. Somebody say make it. Make it. Then I got to maintain it. I got to keep working on it. And I got to wa keep watching my attitude. I got to keep doing what I got to do to be able to not to let the enemy steal my everything good that God wants to do in my life. Get your hands up and say, Father, Father help, me help me to be a maker be a and a maintainer maintain. of peace, peace in all the days of my life. I believe it. I receive it and I shout about it. <laughs> Greatest thing can happen in your life most of you will never miss out on a lot of the things because I'm going to give you seven points, seven keys of how to resolve conflict and restore broken relationship. I'm going to give you seven things going to change your life forever. So uh, dealing with this area, look with me in 2 Corinthians 13. I, these are a couple of scriptures I went over this morning, but I want to hit these real quickly, then get into more. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 11 says, finally, Beloved friends, be what? Cheerful and repair whatever is broken among you. Wow. Would you underline that? Repair whatever is broken among you. It was amazing to me how many people, but not amazing, how many people came to me this morning after teaching this in the 9 o'clock and in the 1130 service, how many people came to me saying what would have they had been in such a major conflict in interpersonal relationships, you know, family, on their job, in, their, in, uh, in marriages, and, and how the enemy has fought. But see, I understand. I know what I'm teaching you right now. It, it is a major issue for, to get you into the breakthrough area that you've been believing for and the miracles you've been believing for. Because I told you this morning, when you're in strife or you're in conflict, in this engaging in this battle, this arguing, this, this 
out of the place of God, this is me. It stops your blessings. You can be in a miracle service and miracles happen all around you, but bypass you because you're you ugly. Because you're stuck on stupid. Am I on the wrong side? We need help. Turn to David and say, we need help. Look what it says. Finally, uh, beloved friends, be cheerful. Repair whatever is broken among you as your hearts are what? Being knitted together, together in perfect unity. Live, look what it says, continually in peace. Not once in a while, not here and there, but live continually. I got to work at, watch this here. If I got to make peace by trying to ask you to forgive me for something I didn't do, but if that's going to help bring peace, then I got to bring peace. I got to be a peacemaker. Amen. I know that's hard. that's hard. It's hard enough for you when, when you, you write and, they, and you know they double dog dirty and wrong, but then you got to still try to, try to not, they, they try to, you want to be right. And it's a spirit that pushes us that we just got to win. Matthew, I mean, Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25. Look what it says in Matthew 12, 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom, every family, every friendship, every church that is divided against itself is brought to desolation. Brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. See, and we got to understand the enemy is fighting against your forward progress, against you being able to achieve or to experience or to uh, uh, the blessing and the breakthrough power of God. And a lot of times it, it's, God, why can't I get healed? God, why can't I seem to get this breakthrough? Why have not this happened for me? It's look like it's happened for everybody. Else. Why is it not? And people go through these things, but then you just mean as you can be, right. angry as you can be, offended as you can be, unforgiving as you can be. Yep. Boy, sure it's quiet in this church here. And you want God's blessing, but you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Go back to the top verse. Go back to verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, because they all came for healing. They came for deliverance. They knew Jesus was there. And Jesus listened, and he knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every, here we go again, and uh, brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. How many husbands have told their wife or their wife told their husband, I can't stand you. You crazy. I don't, this and that, just saying crazy stuff to each other and think you're going to walk away with the blessing on your life? You can walk away from that relationship, but the conflict is still within you and is still destroying you. You just walked away from something that God gave you to help you, but you don't know it because you're so full of yourself. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? It's not going to stand if there's division. Here's a couple of things real quickly. The effect of conflict on your relationship is impacted by how much that person means to you. Number two, the source of conflict and how both of you respond. So I brought out, I think, that it, being right is overrated. People, men, men like to fight to be right, but so do women. But but when you, you can fight to be right, but you're going to be sleeping on the couch. Ain't no going to be no goody-goody going on. You can 
You can fight to be right, but be miserable, tormented. But you're fighting for your right to be right. Or you can fight to be right, and, 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 and nobody comes to your funeral. And I've known people that because they were so mean and cantankerous, 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 and, 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 and full of conflict, when they died, nobody came. Good riddance. So don't fight to try to be right. Fight to bring peace. Fight to be able to restore relationship. Don't let the devil steal something that God gave you. I know you can't see it sometimes when you get so cloudy because you, you, you're dealing with so much issues that go on along the line. So look with me in 1 John 4 and 20. So I want to give you three, three ways that unresolved conflict hurts you. Three ways that unresolved conflict hurts you. How many ways? Three. I got so much stuff I'm going to give y'all. Y'all life ain't going to never be the same again. You're going to... You guys, gonna, we're gonna go. Some of y'all gonna go to the university and teach this. Number three ways. Number, uh, look with me in First John four and twenty. First John four and twenty, and it says in the Living Bible, if someone says I love God, but hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. If I say I love you, and hate her or mad at her. I, I, God says, you don't love me. If someone says, I love who? Come on, I know y'all quiet. I know it's all right. If somebody says that I love who? But hates. I know that's a strong word. Has, has animosity, resentment towards their fellow believer that person is a liar. For if we don't love what? The people we cannot, that we can see, how can we, come on you guys, roll it. How can we, what, love God whom we cannot see? If I can't get along with you, how can I say I love God? There was a movie called Liar, Liar, Liar. <laughs> oh, I forgot I'm on television. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> so the first one that blocks, number one that we need to know unresolved conflict hurts you because it blocks your fellowship with God. Put it down. It blocks your fellowship with God. And what you don't want is to block your fellowship with God when you need God to answer your prayers. When you need God to intervene on your behalf, when you need God supernatural to manifest upon your natural, when you need God's miracle working power, you don't want to be out of place. So the first thing that it does, it, can, it blocks your fellowship with God. Shout at somebody and say, it blocks your fellowship with God. You ever been around somebody? You ever been around somebody and, you, and, and they say, I don't understand. You know, I, 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 I give my tithe. I go to church. I, I, I love God and all that, but they don't understand some of the principles I'm telling you. And then they, they, they think they can, they're getting away with something, acting meanful, hateful, resentful, embittered, won't talk to some other believers. running around gossiping and putting their mouth on them, and thank God going to bless you. You know. You cannot be right with God. Come on, take a picture of that one. Take the picture of that one. You cannot be right with God and wrong with other people. What in the heck do we think that we can be able to mistreat one another and then thank God going to still bless us. Turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm so glad you're here tonight. I'm about to shout right now. I'm about to shout. I'm so happy you're here to hear this here. 
Everything changes when we start making a commitment that we're not going to allow the enemy to steal, kill, or destroy anything and everything God has for us. He's trying to, he's trying to chase you away from the very thing you need to keep. Let the healing begin now. Let the deliverance begin now. Let the miracle working power of God begin right now. In the name of Jesus. Number two, it blocks your prayers from being answered. Look with me. I think it's First um, uh, Peter. Look with me in Peter tonight. Look with me in Peter. Mm, mm, mm. I think it's First Peter, the third chapter. This is important. I got to show it to you, okay? Look at First Peter, the third chapter. It blocks your prayers from being answered. Are you there? Look what it says, First Peter. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Um, do, do, do. Okay, like here, I got it. Go ahead, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Look at First Peter 3 and 7. Come on, put First Peter 3. Oh, they got it on the screen. Look what it says. Likewise, ye what? Husband, deal well with them according to knowledge, giving honor, giving honor, <laughs> giving honor <laughs> unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace and the favor of life that's in God, that's your prayers. Wow. That your prayers be not hindered. Number two, it blocked when you are in having this um, conflict continue in your life and you're not trying to resolve conflict, you're not trying to live in peace, your prayers are blocked. This answers a lot of questions for me. I mean, not just, I'm talking about not just for me, but I'm talking for, for a lot of people that come for me and want counseling and need help. They really need help. But the issue is not the other people, the issue is you. Turn the neighbor and say, the issue is you. I'm sorry to say that, but the issue is you. Come on. Come on, y'all. I know we don't want to say we want everybody else to be the issue. I don't know about y'all, but I'm declaring over y'all you know, the day that you... Now that you watched the broadcast, listen to me now and heard this word, now you need to make a decision, and that is to open the door to your heart and invite Jesus Christ to come into your life. Listen to me. Say this with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart, invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins. And thank you again for being my Lord and Savior. If you said that, everything is changed right now. Angels are rejoicing over you. We rejoice with you. Welcome to the family. I want you to text New Life to 55444. Text New Life to 55444. We want to hear from you. We want to give you a free book. We want to be able to help you to grow and go in the things of God. Love you.